Hello everyone, welcome back. Giantbomb.com's E3 2019 coverage continues. It's night two. Dose. I'm Jeff. <laughs> we got a couch full <laughs> and then some uh, okay, of guests. Uh, Juan Hasmeyer's here. How you doing, sir? I'm good. Great. Uh, yeah, uh, I have from, a bit of jet lag, but. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> from uh, Metronomic? Yes, that's, that's right. We're yeah. busy in Malaysia, yeah. Great. Yep. Great to see you. Thank you. Robin from Phenomena. Phenomena, that's right. How are you? Uh, we just recently rebranded from Funamina. And <laughs> <laughs> I just want to let you all know that we've decided to pronounce our own name correctly as Phenomena. So I'm very excited about that. Thank you very much. Yay. You're welcome. Doc Savaro is here. You'll have to mispronounce I... the name of my company ever again. <laughs> I've gotten so good at mispronouncing it. <laughs> so wait, can that I... That was just in the internet. Can I found Funamina now? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, yes. If it's out there, I'm taking it. <laughs> Funam Funamina LLC. I like yeah, the yeah, yeah. Sounds great. No one will know what you do. All right. Kara Ellison is here. Hello. Of Vampire Bloodlines. The two. The two. The two and colon, two colon, colon, and colon. Bastards. And and bastards. Bastards. <laughs> okay, so Jesus. The two of you back there are writing, let's say, 45% of every game. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That's good. Chris Avalon is one of the characters. So yeah. between, yeah, uh, Void Slay. Bastards, Bloodlines 2. Yeah. Uh, Chris, Amazing you're also games. working on Vampire, is that right? Yeah. No, actually, no? I finished oh. up and uh, Kara took my job. And, uh, wow. Oh, wow. So but I'm really impressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 we're best to be in the It's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're gonna we still got your dying light, too, Gig. She hasn't come out taking that from you. Well, there's not a lot of words about a lot of screaming. Yeah. You're an extra writer. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Fantastic. <laughs> Rhythm gaming. Uh, you're, yeah. you're working on uh, No Straight Roads. Is yeah, that that's right. So yeah, yeah it's uh, it's not really a rhythm game. Okay, it's, it's, it's like an EDM meets rock. Is yeah, a, a so versus. It, yes, yeah. you control an indie rock band trying to topple an EDM empire. That is finally. <laughs> finally. Yeah. Like, what side are you on? Uh, I'm on the rock side. Rock side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I'm a drummer. <laughs> I mm. need to actually. Um, Electronic music is trying to put me out of business. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. I'll put oh. you back into business then. Okay, <laughs> thank you. We can get you like a, more V drums, and you could, you know. Yeah, yeah. You I'll give, like give you a keyboard. Skinny and, yeah. sunglasses. I just, on I've, I've, I've had bad. I've been replaced like by drum machines. <laughs> it's, it hurts my soul. Yeah, like one of those CDJ things. You can be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Serato. Yeah, there's a whole thing. No. But, I, oh, but, but anyway, fine. I'm on the EDM side. Okay. I love you. Because you know. I would have made the whole game, you know, you're fighting EDM so you can hear more EDM. Sure, yeah. Yeah, You've got to exactly. dismantle it, take it apart. Yep. I, I love rhythm understand. games, so, you know, I would just find that the access to rhythm games is going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, uh, I just give you a guitar. And then, hey, play it. Oh, you don't have a rhythm sense, okay. Yeah, <laughs> take no, it back, you know. no, Yeah. So I can smash a guitar. Yeah, but, well, you we can try that yeah. <laughs> to the in, rhythm. In my pro EDM, <laughs> <laughs> you have to smash all these fucking guitars. Yeah, like first you slick the hair back and then you smash the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> and then you whip out a keyboard. Mm -hmm. I should make a game about that. Yeah. 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 That's the wrong sound for I don't even know. Keytars can be anything. Yeah, it's like magic. You know? It's like magic. It's a keyboard. It's Whatever you have, you put on there. Yeah. You want a slap bass keytar, you can do it. Keytars more like a do 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 thing. Well, what? <laughs> they can be many kinds of do-do-do-do things. Sort of a do-do-do-do thing. That's kind of the deal. I don't know. I mean, I guess. That's a more of a cuckoo ka thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is the banana man. Who knows? I don't know. Okay, I'll put a key tie in the game then. Yeah. Oh, you <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, yeah. You're going to record me going do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-
a storyline. <gasps> so you actually understand what the fuck the game is. Exactly. <laughs> oh, now yeah, I have to like. Yeah, you have to write for them. Yes. Yes. Now you have to apply to your studio. Yes. yes. And so you will be able to write the second half of the story, which will be the saga, in which there are werewolves. Oh, that, nice. have, that have no vampire teeth uh, but cannot oh, on next. Yeah, we had a whole yeah. conversation about I actually this met the creator of um, you know, Kita Takashi yeah. and yeah. I told him that he was my inspiration for going to Japan and being Square Enix and all that. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Really, really, bit summit, yeah. Bit summit, where literally the guy said, "Why is everything so funny?" And Kate goes, "Sorry," and then laughs. <laughs> That's Best so quote him. Of the whole interview, like, so low tension, tension guy, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. so low tension. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so we are eventually shipping with Tom. L Luna comes out next week. Um, if we sold. 20,000 copies of Luna, it would break even and I would port it to something else. So that's my challenge to all of you. <laughs> <laughs> just buy it. Don't even play Take it. Take the Luna challenge. Buy it and, then just, and just thumbs up it. Um, and then and then Shaq will love you. Oh, oh wow. Well. Mm. I mean, Sexy. If Shaq will love you. I have to say, these, these pillows are lit. Uh, yeah. They're, they're very I won nice. one. They came out very this well. Is, this Jason is, put these is, pillows this together. Is, this is the result of success. Yeah. This is what this is what the success in the giant yeah, bomb comes Exactly. Means. That's uh, they said they said, Hey, we have a little more money to spend this year. What do you want to do? And I was like, Well the couch broke, so we need to get a new one of those. <laughs> and suddenly, oh my god. Yeah, some couch pillows. What yeah. happened there? What? It was Shaq. And now oh it's my saying, god, now it's like shit. The pillow has a good side and an evil side, and it's up to you to decide. <laughs> <laughs> That's narrative choice, am I right? The player decides. Yeah. You have just like devastated me. Yeah. It's magic pillow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love you guys, man. Seriously. Moving <laughs> <laughs> so, on. Kara, you're primarily here showing. Bloodlines 2. Bloodlines 2. Yeah. Um, showing the vampires, doing the evils on each other, doing their thin blood thing. Yeah. They basically, uh, you know, all just trying to play each other off against each other all the time and you're just getting in the middle and just all tangled up it's all a big you know noiry mess it's great so like a katamari damashi sort of like just <laughs> oh, vampire just balls vampire. Yeah. 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 it's like a kind of more right. bitey right yeah. katamari okay yeah. so the ball's got teeth it's got teeth it gets stuck a lot like when it's trying to oh, roll yeah, no. <laughs> it's yeah, it just gets just wedged like in there bang. it's just like you're, it's like a, the ball's got cleats or it's, something yeah it's like and no it's, yeah, it's difficult it's like a kind of hedgehog style thing uh, but yeah it's yeah it's great um, so far everyone likes it so that's pretty great are the vampires sexy because I feel like vampires have incredible sex appeal well the thing is like in our studio like all of all of so uh, we have a level designer who called Kelly who I absolutely adore oh, with my entire out. heart <laughs> but she has some very strange ships in in this like she mm. goes for the characters that are like the like oddball ones and she's like oh my god he Sounds is sexy. so hot I hope that he nails <laughs> yeah. me Tell and me you're more. just like, I don't understand this choice like this guy uh, he's not a good example Wait a minute, of that uh, sounds hauntingly familiar yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you're Sorry, a person Jack. if you're a person who makes spectacularly bad romantic choices that's definitely the game for you <laughs> universal appeal like, <laughs> Have you ever dated ooh, someone ooh. who like killed a bunch of cats? Well, yeah. Oh. <laughs> this is for you. Whoa, whoa. Okay, maybe okay, not. Maybe right. not. Not, not, not willingly. <laughs> Chris Avalone is here as well. Oh yeah. I'm here. <laughs> the man who killed so many cats. Yeah. So I love cats. <laughs> oh, the other Chris. <laughs> So you're primarily uh, here representing Dying Light 2. That is not true. No. Jeff, well, I mean, I, the shirt I, says Dying Light well, 2. Oh, come on. You've worn shirts, Jeff. They don't speak <laughs> to you. I, 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 I try not to. No, I, but I'm, I'm so, basically wearing Jeff. Now they have, you have Jedi Fallen Order coming right, out with, with light side and dark side. And mm -hmm. then we have Dying Light, which has daytime and nighttime action. Do you Heavy. see the thematic connection Whoa, daytime there? and nighttime Whoa. action. Wow. Sounds good. And there, but yeah. there's no vampires. There's just a shitload of zombies. Okay. Wow. And humans that live among zombies. But I don't know if they co-mingle. It could. But say you've raised all sorts of questions. Are there force yeah, vampires? I mean, could, you, is that, is could you write that into the Star Wars canon? I already did that. Okay. Yeah, you I'm not going to do that again. Okay. Yeah, fan already base gets road. really angry about that yeah. stuff. They're like, how dare you put vampires but in our Star Wars? But this is like a new Wars. canon. Maybe everyone's excited about fucking, it. What? Everyone will just love Star Wars now, right? Everyone's happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you yeah. asking me personally? You shouldn't go that media. I mean, the Star Wars fandom accepted a character named Bigger Luke. 
surely they can put up with some vampires. <laughs> That's a real thing. What? <laughs> what? He was a clone of Luke Skywalker, and he was a little bit bigger. <laughs> I'm not, not kidding. A real thing. It's a, I mean, it's a real thing, but it's not a real thing. It was, it, well, it's this now a non-canon thing. Expanded, oh, expanded <laughs> universe. Yeah. 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 They yeah. got away with all sorts of shit. Yeah. Bigger Luke. And then they flushed Luke. it all down the toilet. Yeah. They said, no, uh, we gotta get back some to... Some of that stuff needed to go, though, Jeff, really, seriously. Oh, let's bring mm. the, emperor, like, the Emperor back. Let's clone him. Like, they cloned everybody, man. Yeah, well, yeah. at some point, you know, you know he's got to sell books, right? And, you know, what sells a book is put on the cover. Well, like, here's the a thing is, if you do too much of that, you don't sell many more books after that. So, like, wow, did you read that first story? Yeah, <laughs> Let's well. wait for the movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then people wait for the movies, and as I said, oh yeah, that, that that gets good. Yeah. Right, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. That gets really good. I don't know. Good. You know, honestly, have not seen, except for Rogue One, I have not seen any. I of loved the new Rogue Star One. I, I like Rogue, Rogue One, was really one a lot. Good. Yeah, see, uh, but, yeah. but didn't see any of the other ones. I don't know. Well, Jeff, I'm really sorry to hear that. You, you should know. schedule some time for that. I'm sure that's going to be a big win. Let me just spoil something for you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Jedi Fallen Order uh, here being shown playable for the first time. Uh, <laughs> you know, what's it like? You know, Star Wars seems like, you know, very different people holding the keys these days uh, to that universe. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, Lucasfilm was uh, very nice to deal with. Um, we didn't have any issues terribly with storyline or uh, what sort of uh, planet choices you wanted to make, which actually ends up being a big deal in a Star Wars game. Like, you can't just go oh, out and sure. use Alderaan because they will come and fuck it with a hammer and just... Yeah. <laughs> They're like, sorry, I already blew up Alderaan. You can't make it a nice, happy place. I'm like, oh, I love Alderaan. You're like, shut up, Chris. What if we just clone Alderaan? Alderaan. Yeah. Bigger Alderaan. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you only got that sign. I'm gonna take it. What I heard you say was you can't use Alderaan because they'll come fuck you up with a hammer. And I was like, Whoa. oh yeah. Have you ever worked Those for Disney? Amazing to work with. Yeah, yeah. What if we think? Oh, yeah. yeah. Bigger Luke you know, and bigger yeah. Han yeah. face yeah. off against each other. Is there a bigger Han? Is there a bigger Han? I think there should be a bigger Han. Is that just Dash Rendar? I mean, that's just that's oh, just me. Yeah, yeah. Like, and you me. really know your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, that's actually it. That is like the You're entire brand of Star Wars. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> gonna be a Star Wars competition, though. Yeah. So, if you had to do, you know, be around while the game's being demoed or anything like that, or you just kind of no, like actually most uh, the most of the show is uh, just doing dying light and explaining like all yeah. the reactivity, uh, which normally is a very shallow word in the RPG world because all you do is have NPCs right. react differently based on your choices, which actually sounds really serious. But mm -hmm. then uh, these crazy Polish developers over in Techline are like, "Well, we want the world to change." And I'm like, "Well, I've yeah. heard." that before. Oh wow, you want the world to change? <laughs> People talk differently, great. And they're like, no, we want the world to change. So what they did is they had this huge, the huge city. It's like, anyway, big city. Mm -hmm. um, you make choices and suddenly new districts will suddenly open up. Like you lower water and like all these flooded districts open up and you get new gameplay and new new areas to explore that literally like if you make a different choice earlier in the game, other players won't get that. And that's the yeah. first time I've heard a developer actually do that because the resource cost involved right. is exactly. something that would, that would make me feel so guilty that I would never do it. But they don't care. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah. wow, you guys are committed. And I mean, like, They're an just, asylum like, system. They're the yeah. fuck out of it. Like, this content will be seen by one tenth of the players. <laughs> and we want to be able to say that. So yeah. But the okay. difference is yeah, because they're they're gonna gonna be so happy. Happy. Well, but the we thing is with sleep. the cooperative play, and then they're like, but you can show that world that you created to other people. Uh, to jump onto your yeah. game. Like, hey, here's, here's the city that I customize a certain way, and I built it out a certain way, and I lowered the water, and you didn't, and you suck. But you can come see my, <laughs> you can come see my city, and yeah, so that's how they structured it. So I'm very envious. So what is? How, how do you write to that? Do you have to write like way more lines because that's the way the world works? Yeah, so yeah but that's pretty normal for RPGs. You yeah. know this. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah, like, I was gonna say, like, d d is it actually like exponentially more work on your end, or is yeah, it just like you're just kind of writing as what? you normally would, and they're like, oh, we're gonna make it matter. Over well, here. no, but it's worthwhile. Well, otherwise, like reactivity doesn't matter. Because then, like, yeah. if, you, if you didn't, if you didn't actually, okay, if everyone saw the same thing and heard the same thing, eventually, like, that's not really right. reactivity. But if they're like, well, you're actually going to miss an entirely different plotline that was based on your character making a certain choice and having certain mm -hmm. agency, that's important to me. And I'm like, I will write how many main lines that is until localization comes in and goes, stop, Chris, because we can't record all this shit. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're oh man, I had taking really... the entire budget. <laughs> yeah. What writing. did you just do with this? <laughs> Script. I had a really amazing question come back from localization recently. I made a joke about Kegel 
Bubbles. Do you guys know what yes. that is? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, like, I had this Everybody's joke about friend. Kegels, and the, and I and and the, the question came back, and they were like, "So we think we understand what Kegels are," and I'm like, "Great." <laughs> I don't want to explain that. First step done. <laughs> Great. And then the second thing was, they were like, "But we don't understand why it's contextually appropriate here," and I was like. Oh. Oh, so now God. I have to draw a diagram of the female anatomy <laughs> and then teach them about some, some oh. sexual Can't you just send them that, let just, me Google that link? Yeah, you can you just like, like here's a Wikipedia yeah, 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 yeah. link and just like, like check it out. that episode of The League it's where they the, have Kegel, the elf on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's such a good episode. He's always judging you in his own special way. I find elf on the shelf so fucked up. Can I just say, do you guys know about elf on the shelf? Like only, uh, it's messed only up. from it's Adam messed Boys on oh, Twitter. It's, it's, like, it's really yeah, messed up. It's like, it's like it's, you it's put it's this out that's like looking at your children, it's big brother. and then you move it around at night, and in the morning it's like, where's the elf on the shelf? It's paying attention to you. Or, or do presents. you move it around? It's, right. Or you don't. Yeah, you <laughs> like show up in the toilet. You know, it's like looking up at you. So I, it's hey, weird. welcome to the surveillance oh, state. Merry Christmas, <laughs> motherfuckers. Do they definitely sell elves that have cameras built in? They must, right? Finding it and going, yay! Yeah, pretending innocence. Yeah. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to yeah. No, that, 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 that stuff is messed up. But if you called it Kegel, yeah, that would be pretty cool. The league did a really good time. <laughs> <episode. laughs> I was very impressed. Yeah, yeah. So did your joke get passed? Oh uh, yeah, it, it was great, but like also like I got a ton more questions back that they were like they assumed <laughs> that like all of my other jokes were sexual in some way when they weren't, <laughs> and then a lot of them came back and they were like, so is this like a joke about sex? And I'm like, no. We should have just said that. Oh, yeah. 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 oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, oh absolutely. It's a Scottish, it's a Scottish <laughs> sexual <laughs> move yeah. uh, that I. But a lot of the questions are coming from Fred, the French localizers, and I was like, uh, you don't know this comedy complex sexual move. What's wrong with your country? It's gone downhill since I've been, you know, like, but yeah, exactly. so it was a pretty interesting You are not living up to my stereotype of what French yeah. people are. I just I'm want a, a French oh. PR guy looking at me. Like, like, yeah. No, no, no. I'm shaking the finger. I'm right now. No, 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 no. This is unfair. <laughs> Life's not fair. The French have had enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I beat up Jack to find your countrymen for too long. <laughs> so working on, you know, vampire being, you know, an RPG, like, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's feels like there's, there's, you know, there's one way of writing, or there's multiple ways of writing. Anyway, yeah. Void Bastards. Void <laughs> 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 Being a roguelike, a run-based game, yeah. I, I, you know, those two writing experiences seem like they would be very, very different. Oh yeah, they're right? so different. Yeah, so for Void Bastards, what we did was we did a lot of world building in the beginning, and we kind of looked at we wanted to make like Theresa May's like space Brexit, post Brexit, mm -hmm. awful kind of you know, this bureaucracy that's got out of control. And then essentially you're in this kind of, uh, sort of red dwarf kind of, uh, you know, like absurd dark comedy. And essentially you've got to get all the way through the Sargasso Nebula to the end. And um, so we, we basically plotted it sort of like to have like five sections and in between there's choke points of narrative. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, you also like, you know, I've written a bunch of lines for all of the enemies and, you know, there's like a bunch of like these little dudes called Jubes who are very Scottish and swear at you all the time and in fact are voiced by oh, me because they couldn't all get Scottish anyone. are like that right <laughs> yeah yes. but the thing is like they couldn't get anyone to do the lines that I had written because no one was as Scottish as me so they were like can you not just do it for free so then I was like oh god so like probably I think one of the worst punishments as a video games writer is having to say your own oh, lines oh, yeah. into your microphone. It's probably <clears throat> one of the worst punishments that you could visit upon yourself. Do you, do you just randomly in those readings just go, if it's not Scottish, it's crap! <laughs> <laughs> like you just do it? Like, I mean, because you could do it and... It it it's, would sound good. Like I just did it, and it sounded like shit. It's, it's like a lot of it's good. Like, I mean, my swears were there were a lot of c words going on, <laughs> and like very creative. Uh, you know, I love this. it's it was very kind of it was you know it was very cathartic to yell that stuff into a microphone for like Ooh. an hour. It's just <laughs> like a bunch of absolute bastards. You know, like, <laughs> it's just it's really good just to say that stuff out loud. But yeah, um, yeah. less you know. I'm changing jobs. I'm going to become a video <laughs> yeah. game writer. I, I, so I locked myself. Yeah. In a room with like two hit points, and one of those little guys came by. cruising around, yeah, just like like <laughs> trying to find a way in, and just cursing at me the whole time. I, and I, I hadn't been really been paying attention to any of the noise they've been making right. up to that point, and suddenly I had time to listen. I was like, 
a foul mouth motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Right wow. All right. Yeah. Don't you have a developer complain about the amount of profanity in VoIP? And you're like, but it's called Void Bastards. Like, you should yeah, be yeah, in exactly. the title. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. The meaning is there. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. E for everyone. Love it, right? Yeah. But yeah, no, so many people, though, have contacted me to say, um, <laughs> can you please stop shouting at me in your video game? Oh. Like, oh. they're just like, I keep so like getting, <laughs> I keep feeling like Kara's really mad at me, but I just <laughs> be playing a lot of Void Bastards. So <laughs> that's quite cool. Yeah. If I if I feel annoyed at some point, I'll just send them the game, and then it'll just swear just, for me. Just get all the audio clips and exactly. just like put it on a soundboard, and call people up, and just start just, hitting like, the buttons them. on it, and then hang yeah, up. on a keytar. Right? Yeah. Mm. yeah, on a keytar. Yeah. 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 Three buttons that make like a doop doop yeah. doop, and then the rest of all will be the swearing. Yeah, I'm kill off the idiot and play. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So are you showing the game here at the show? Or yeah, we actually have a media booth. We released a trailer like around a few weeks ago. Yep, and yeah, we're having you know a media booth where we just show the game to potential partners and also oh, cool. uh, yeah. media as well. Mm. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of nice uh, reviews so far. We got nominated for some awards. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I yeah. think the yeah I think as the the concept is quite unique in the sense that you know you have a normal action adventure game. But you know you have a uh, well, slightly we are indies, but people yeah, do yeah. tell us that we have this triple A look and feel mm -hmm. to it, and um, yeah, the enemies are following the music, you know. So you're in this very full fledged action adventure game, yeah. but uh, when the chorus hits, the boss will definitely hit you in a certain way, you know. So if if you understand the pattern between the boss and the music, then you'll have a big advantage. Right, you sort yeah. of know what know what to expect yeah. a little bit, and you can just be an action gamer. Uh, you know, you don't have to have very good rhythm sense, and you can still play the game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, You know, it's funny. I was just hanging out the other night with uh, a woman from Harmonix whose name is Hope. Oh, and I was explaining Harmonix? to her, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that, that that Harmonix was my like it's my <coughs> my prototypical like. Very, very early on in your career, mm -hmm. you, you you get exposed to something and you realize, holy shit, the games industry is filled with really fucking cool people. Mm -hmm. okay. So I went to a party in mm. Boston, which was the Looking Glass Wake. Ooh, so nice. it was when Looking Glass closed, and there were a bunch of people at the party that were all working at mm. Looking Glass that were also in a band. Mm -hmm. And I was really into indie rock. Yep. And the band was called Tribe. Tribe. It turned okay. out that Eric. Eric. Mm -hmm. And all the and Greg and everybody, they were all in this band and I was super into the band. Like mm. I had a friend that was into the band. They gave me the CD and then I bought all the other CDs. Yep. yep. So I go to this games party mm -hmm. which is supposed to be fucking sad because the mm. company is closing and they're like, we're going to start a studio and we're mm. going to make games about music. And I was like, oh. holy fucking shit. First of all, <laughs> I love your band, but also mm. you're going to make video games? That's amazing. Yeah. So like fast forward a you know, year, maybe a year mm. and a half, and they start working on Frequency, which is their first game. Oh, and Frequency. And I happen to be yeah, in Boston, yep. and they're like, will you come by and play yeah. test this game? Yep. And I'm like, fuck yes, right? Mm. So I'm all like, you know, 28 or whatever. <laughs> yeah. and, I show up and I'm like, I'm ready to play test your game. Yep. And they put me in a room, and I start playing it, and I cannot beat the first level. Like, I cannot get... It. So you couldn't I see the first level? I could not beat it. Right, right. I could right, not beat it. I could not beat it. Yeah. And I had like all this like raid shame. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like sitting there in the chair and like, did it, it's dying. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And like, you know, just like that feeling of like you're looking over your shoulder, like, are they watching? Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And then, are they judging? Whenever you go to the arcade, exactly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, like an hour that. goes by yep, and yep, I'm like, yep. now I'm like wet. You know, I'm like, I'm like sweat <laughs> shaming and like super disgusting. And they come in and they kind of peel the control out of yep, my head. Yep. And they're like, what'd you think? And I was like, it's great. <laughs> and I loved it. And I was like, could you just show me the first level? And then like, yeah, just like, yeah, like yeah. you know, all the way through. Yeah. No, this is this is a thing I'm trying to solve here. So you know? it was, yeah. it was, mm -hmm. it was, it was humiliating for me. Mm. But then, like, fast forward another six months. Okay. The game comes out. I go to the store. I buy it. I'm like, I'm gonna have a dinner party. Yep. I invite everybody to my house. And like, I know these guys. Mm -hmm. They made this amazing game, mm. and we're gonna play it at the dinner party. And like, and five minutes into playing it, everyone's like, fuck this shit. And then like, <laughs> like, like and I'm just like, no, 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 no. It's Amazing. So the truth mm. of the matter is, is that you really most people don't have any rhythm. Like this is, a, it's a hard Actually, problem to solve. Like, no, it, you're they doing do. God's work. Is <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't believe that. You know, you know. I mean, again, you know, if you just hear a song, yeah. you hear it five times. You know, you will definitely understand when the chorus is going to kick in. You know, and we want to use that musical instinct of yours yeah. to play our game. It's like I, when you're in the car and you're like. 
Chuma. Yeah, I said, Ooh. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, think we have I, the rights to this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, Some people do have. We'll silence that part out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't get sued. No. Yeah. They'll be muted on Twitch. Some people don't have it. Let them come. Come on. <laughs> Take me on. Ass cat. <laughs> That shit is hard. I hope that you do amazing, and I can't you wait to come over to Abu. I'm yeah, coming yeah. over here. Well, I can't because yeah. I'm leaving tomorrow morning. But if oh, I could, man. I would. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I will play it. Send me an advance copy. Give me those codes. Yes. What was it that I'm made you it. want to tell this particular story? Rock versus EDM. Like I know, you know I, I, I'm not. <laughs> Says the drummer. I am not entirely familiar. <laughs> yes. I know that you used to work at Square Enix. Uh, yeah. You worked on Final Fantasy 15. Yes. Like what? What was it about this particular premise, this this story, this this game that you like? This is the thing I want to mm. branch out and make. Actually. You know, uh, my co-founder, his name is Daim, my cousin, mm -hmm. and he used to work as a concert artist for Street Fighter V. So we both were in Tokyo, mm -hmm. and every two Saturdays or so, you know, we meet up at Ikebukuro and we talk about this game. And we always have a clash in terms of creativity, you know, and we're always talking about, you know, some people think that your, ta your their taste is better than others, mm -hmm. you know. And when we're talking about it, we're talking about, uh, you know, how people perceive creativity. That's where we took the classic tale mm -hmm. of rock versus EDM. Right, <laughs> yeah, the tale of the oldest time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> As always, music is. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're, 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 Brian you're, Eno you're, versus Queen. Yep. So, <laughs> close. <Specific. laughs> <Yes. laughs> Let's do it. Music for airports, motherfucker! <laughs> That's right! Perfect <laughs> strategies, motherfucker! I would judge your taste, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, your taste is shit, you know, yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, so, so I thought, you know, we make sure that all the bosses in the game also have a reason why they're playing music and you also have a sense of justice. So we mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that we show a world where people play dif music for different reasons. Right. Yeah, and that's the kind of world that we wanted to create. And this is something I learned from my experience with uh, Final Fantasy XV mm -hmm. as well. Yes. Rock versus 13. Rock versus 13? Oh, don't talk about Versus 13 here, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't talk about Versus 13 here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about who, who dangerous, man. Dangerous. Okay, <laughs> bust in here. Uh, don't ask any questions about Versus 13. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but to be honest, yeah, I was in Square Enix since Versus 13, all okay. the way to Final Fantasy 15. Yeah. Yep. And so when you show up, do people just like, do they worship the ground you walk on? Is it like, mm. a, like oh my god, Final Fantasy, you touched it? Like, I, can, no. I, can I take a photo with you? Can I get your autograph? No, more like, um, so what happened to Versus 13? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, no, don't, I don't, I don't, even your own people. <laughs> so I don't think the swords are big enough. <laughs> it's a remake, though. Yeah. Yeah. Honey, that is always true. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, they always ask me, so you, you talk to Nomura, son? <laughs> you know, yeah, yes, last time, yeah. <laughs> He's a great guy. Can, can I talk to Nomura, son? <laughs> no. <laughs> sure, go find him. I, I'm not going to stop you. I talked to Katie and he apologized for inspiring me to get in the games industry. You can say that. Yeah, 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 you can. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go <laughs> mene. That's exactly what Kitata is. How long have you guys been working on it? Uh, you mean this No Straight Roads? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, uh, I left Square Enix November 2017, so December 2017. So yeah, we're one and a half years. Mm. Yep, mm. it's a very short period. Um, my company actually has, we have 30 people oh, wow. at the moment. Yeah. But we do too. Oh, you too? We're the same size. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Let's make great 30, games. 30 people is a, it's a is great it good size. Number, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. great. We work on a bunch of different games, but mm -hmm. it's still great. Like, mm -hmm. it's great having yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, it's like the ideal studio size. I yeah, exactly. It's not too small to the point that you have less ideas. Yeah. Yeah, but it's mm -hmm. big enough to... It's, it's, sorry. What am I saying? It's, it's, it's big enough to have many ideas, yeah, but yeah. small enough to control, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's really, really nice. Um, you know everybody. When you walk yeah. in, you're like, hello, everyone. Exactly. 30 people, like, I get When that. someone's out, you notice. Well, yeah. Yeah, and, sure. And That's actually quite better. When, someone, <laughs> when someone's really there, you're like, I'm so glad to see you. Like, I missed yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And more than half of our employees are actually fresh graduates. Oh, oh that's know? amazing. So I want to yeah. give opportunities to Malaysians. You know, and all, all our voice actors are also Malaysians as well, and they, they only voice for advertis advertisements, you know, so I wanted to give them a lot of opportunities, yeah. I think I had the best meal of my entire life in Malaysia? In Kuala Lumpur. See, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> we win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in Malaysia it's really good food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you didn't incredible. know, yeah. It's what was like, it? What was it? Yeah. Uh, nasi lemak. Nasi lemak, of course. Yeah. <laughs> nasi lemak, yeah. Incredible. Do you yeah. know any like, good like, Malaysian curse words? That you could maybe oh. like insert into it. In a Scottish accent, I do I say something really insulting in Malaysian? You seriously want me to say 
it now in front of the camera. Yeah, if Why you guys not? like, I mean, if you, you want it. We're right, yeah, yeah. Bug up. Well, we just said curse like me million. right now. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. So, yeah, but yeah. this, you know, Asian curse words can be worse because you're insulting your mother's private parts. So. Oh. <laughs> oh. Mm. Just do it to Shaq. Yeah, uh, yes, okay. Pukima. <laughs> I can't believe I said that in front of Okay, okay, now do it to Dave Lang. Say something uh, even worse. What? <laughs> Very Pokemon. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. My belief is not So, you've done the right thing, my friend. You've done the Thank right thing. Thank you. Chris and Kara, you, you've both written a lot of games. Are, are, are there stories, I mean, are, are there styles of writing that you feel aren't just coming up in games that you're just like, man, I wish I had an opportunity to write something this way, <coughs> whether it's like a style of game or just like, are there, there things that you just feel like unfulfilled on because, you know, it's like, hey, we got to write this branching storyline and this and, and consequences like matter. Like Shakespearean you know, like the, couplets, mm. like, I mean, like, or, what, you know, you yeah, I, that's, yeah, there aren't that many games that are just, you know, Poetry based, <laughs> poetry yeah. based mm -hmm. games. Yeah. But like, you know. as as writers, do you ever feel like you know, like, oh, I wish I could spread my wings into oh, like yeah, writing this <laughs> kind of wild game? Or just, mm. I kind of want to do like episodic stuff. I haven't really done episodic stuff too much, and then like, I like the kind of um, TV style like tentpole stuff where you have to put like a kind of cliffhanger in it. Yeah. Sure, like different I, types of builds. Exactly, and, yeah. and I kind of like that style because I think most games want you to kind of close it off. A lot yeah. of the time, like it's, it goes all the way through, and then you get to close. I don't know if you've done anything like episodic style. Uh, just rogue like games, okay. which mm -hmm. never really end their episodes; they just keep going. Um, mm -hmm. I gotta tell you, like, the, the surprise for me is like I usually don't know what those are until someone presents a new game system in front of me that I've never seen before. Yeah, Ooh. and I'm like, how would I apply a story? Does, does it does it need a story? Does it need words? Like you know, can it be told art artistically? You know, with audio, whatever it happens to be. And usually that system will dictate, well, I hadn't thought about writing that way before, but mm -hmm. let me give it a shot and fail like 30 times. And then the 31st time, we're like, okay, well, we have to yeah. shut this. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's so usually, and that makes me happy because you're seeing so much stuff coming out of the independent space where it's like all these systems I never would have thought would make gameplay and then they're like but well, we, we would like a story to this and sometimes it's like i don't know if it needs a story because you actually have a great experience here all by itself without any words yeah. fucking it up so, <laughs> but yeah usually it, it comes from the system side for me and it's a su surprise that i don't even know what it is sometimes yeah, yeah a lot of the like really original games are essentially just like it's kind of like you know i, I think my my friend uh like described it as like um, like running alongside a moving car and then handing bits of the script through the window. <laughs> That's what it feels like to be a narrative designer a lot of the time, and especially with an original game where they're trying to develop the systems like as you're going along. Ooh. You're trying to produce it like as it's happening and Ooh. then adapt to that game system constantly. And so if it's the first time anyone's ever seen like you know yeah. your your game, Ooh. then you're basically when you're a narrative designer on that sort of stuff, it's like really challenging because you have to con continually adapt to what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Like, uh, one nice thing about Into the Breach was uh, Justin and Matthew, the subset guys, mm. uh, so they, cool. they, oh my god, I could not stop playing it. I was supposed to be bug testing it. <laughs> if I bugged that game, it's my Such fault. Um, and then, uh, they, well, they got the gameplay loop down. I'm like, well, how long are you guys going to spend doing this? Like, until it's done. I'm like, that's the first time I've heard any developers say that or have the freaking thing <laughs> yeah. But yeah. they did, and then they're like, okay, well, now we need words. And I'm like, well, I'm not sure it needs words, but I will give it my best shot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's wow. funny, actually, we added a story to Luna, and it's, so this is like, it shipped in like October of 2017 on like Oculus and Steam VR and Microsoft Mixed Reality. And then I actually kind of just like, I just like, okay, it's done mm -hmm. and it's gone. And like mm -hmm. it went off. And mm -hmm. then we got the opportunity to port it to the PlayStation. And in that time, we hired a writer named Dan Clegg, who's mm -hmm. a voice actor and a writer. And we made a separate product that was like a sort of an add on to the universe that we made for the Magic Leap called Moondust Garden where he wrote a little story about the fox and the bird and like the fox is depressed and doesn't want to come out it's a little hole and the bird's like trying to encourage it to come out and so you're using the magic leap to like mm -hmm. build this little narrative space around the fox and like encourage it to come out and after we shipped that product I was like, do you think you could play through Luna and like write a story for it? Because I I wrote a narrative for it and Ooh, every other person uh, that, that, that worked on the game um, you know, the game is about effectively letting go of a traumatic experience, right? So everyone on the team looked inward to like something about 
their experience that gave them like a little scribble feeling in their belly, like kind of unease. Yeah. And then what, how could they let go of it? And so each of us had a story about what Luna was about and none of us felt comfortable writing a narrative for it. So Dan shows up on the team and about a year later, I'm like, would you sit down and just write a story for it? Mm -hmm. And he wrote the most <clears throat> charming story and he has an accent. <laughs> so he read the story and it sounds so cool. And like, I was just, I was doing a podcast today for the AIS with, um, with Austin Wintry. We were talking about mm. it because he did the music for it. And he was like, I really wanted there to be a story when we first released it. And I was like, yeah, but none of us felt comfortable writing it. And I think there's something really interesting about being able to look into a game after you've shipped it yeah. and then tell the story of it. And it made me wish that I could do that with everything I've ever made. Like, yeah. I wish I could go back and rewrite some piece of it or, like, mm -hmm. retouch a little, mm -hmm. like a little bit of it, you know? Yeah. Because you never, like you're saying, it's like you're feeding the script into the window yeah. mid-run. And, like, yeah, you're doing the best you can. But, like, yeah. there's, like, this, sometimes there's continuities or, like, there's, like, nuances that you just can't get to. So, like, yeah. do, you know, I mean, like, maybe what we should just do from now on mm -hmm. is release the game and then two years later, like, release the, like, gold version, mm -hmm. you know, with, like, uh, the slightly uh, better story. I don't know if you should oh, do a gold, gold version. Like, sometimes, like, I get the temptation, and this happened with End of the Breach, where I'm like, can I just borrow your engine after you ship the game? Because there's another story I want to oh, tell. Oh, that's even better. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. And then, like, they complement yeah. each other on the yeah, same yeah. level. You're like, well, here's the original story, but here's, like, the Robert Haneke version of the exactly. story. Exactly, here's the alternate universe. In, so, in Japan, we call it a day one patch. <laughs> <laughs> here we, here we call it Game of the Year itself. edition. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. There you go. Uh, or early access. Uh, I guess like that's not entirely unlike Dreams in yeah. a way, yes. where Dreams yeah, has dreams. the tools. There's a large part of it out, Ooh. but the story content is is Ooh. not. See what you're doing there. Ooh. Good link. Not there Good yet. Link. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, dreams. So I worked in Dreams, and it's basically like. Uh, Essentially, a game development tool for for the PlayStation. It's so lit. Really, really yeah. powerful. Yeah, I'm so excited about it. It's like, Basically, oh. yeah, like it's actually going to be. I think it's going to be really powerful for people who do want to tell stories in it. I Essentially, agree. because you know you can uh, borrow something that someone else has made, plop it right in your scene, and then just tumble it, and then just Ooh. yeah, and like keep doing that until you know you're. It's basically this big collaborative project that essentially you can you know and you can keep it offline as well if you don't want to show anyone. Yeah. Like you girls, like, like if you're really These shy. These are my private <laughs> secret <laughs> stories. Ooh. Yeah, my absolute, like, it's my, my absolute Rock favorite hard. person on. <laughs> oh, it's what? Got it's what? Got what? If I upload it to the server, they'll know. Whoa, whoa, Jeff. Whoa, whoa. That my sounds like a Black Mirror episode. Hey, they've, got <laughs> of, they've got terms of service. Yeah. They'll find it. My absolute favorite person in dreams is just um, this person who makes a series of internal organs. And that just publishes them in a museum. Oh, that's beautiful. And, like, oh. I don't know. I just, I really, it's really, really bizarre, but I absolutely adore it. This person is like such a weirdo, but are such they, an amazing. That's so great, though. That's are, so they, yeah. Yeah. are they that's like so normal organs, or is it like <laughs> kind of a. Bespoke organs. So are like, they making like a or, mooter museum in they're, dreams? They're, yeah, they're, ma they're <laughs> making like a very strange museum okay. kind of dreams that I absolutely love. Like, I love it to death. It's Have amazing. they published a colon? Yet, <laughs> I think there is a whole lot of Uranus is in there for sure. Oh, god, you try it. <laughs> Look, I write too. <laughs> Siobhan actually gave us some codes for the program that I run at UC Santa Cruz, and mm -hmm. I have been just dying to get the PlayStation and the codes and the kids in there next year and see what they make in the space because. You know, I teach there every year, and like, actually, mm. the reason I'm going home mm. to, tomorrow. tomorrow morning yeah. is to graduate my seniors, okay. who I just spent a year with, mm. and they're all they've made their little games. They're going off to do stuff, and there's a lot of ramp up time mm -hmm. to learn an engine, to figure out how to, you know, if you're going to mm -hmm. use Unreal or you're going to use Unity yeah. or, you know, you're using Twine, whatever you're using, and to get everyone on the same page. Whereas if you could just get in there with something like Dreams, you could potentially make something not only that is, I mean. That render is super fucking sexy. It's amazing, mm -hmm. right? The voxel based render, yeah. Alex, is like genius yeah. level. Mm -hmm. But then on top of it, there's all the music and the visual effects mm -hmm. and the sound and everything. You can really make something super high quality very quickly. Yeah. And then because you can trade it and iterate and get feedback mm -hmm. from the community, I feel like my students' games are going to like level up exponentially with a tool like mm -hmm. that. I just think a lot about when I, when I was working on Dreams, I thought like, every day, if I was a very young child at home, yeah, like 
picking up dreams for the first time. Mm -hmm. It would be very, very soon between my learning how to use it and my realizing, oh, I'm a game designer. Mm -hmm. It's just like something that people can do. Yeah. And you know, when I was a kid, like it just seemed really far away from me, especially because I was in Scotland. I was like, oh, they're made in Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. America. Yeah. I thought they came from a, like a Which toy was, factory. That yeah. It's Mario. 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 Yeah. <laughs> just like, all right. Well, I guess it's, it's like, all right. It's cool. Such a lie because you know someone down the road was making making landings out of his basement or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. But it's, essentially, I I feel like it, it's one of those things that's gonna like let kids know that they can just yeah, do this. It's like Ooh. a normal thing and like connect things together and make these Ooh. creative Ooh. like things and like I don't know. I just feel it's like super super powerful. Ooh. It is. And actually, thinking about game systems, I, I tell my students this all the time. Like traffic the way that traffic moves through a city is mm. a system it's a game design yep, right yeah. you know voting is a game design mm -hmm. like mm. the way money is a game design yep. you know like in the ultimate game design. It is. <laughs> society is a game design society we game live design. in a game design, <laughs> in, game so design. in societies that are like really war torn mm. people have invented repeatedly the same mm. kind of currency mm. which is called a stamp backed currency so the idea is that it only has value as okay. long as it moves around mm. Mm, so if you hoard it yeah. like an asshole, mm -hmm. it loses value. It's right. also called negative interest, right? Mm -hmm. Like we could live in a world with negative interest and the 1% that have all the money would have to move the money around to everybody mm -hmm. else in order for that money to have value. Right. That's a game design. And like thinking about game design and really thinking about systems and doing systems design is a way to solve huge problems. Like yep. it's a way to think about problems. You can build a little simulation and run it and think about like what happens when this is true or this is true and like you don't need to make a game about ooh, ooh. a war-torn country with like stand back currency but you could you could explore what new kinds of value means mm -hmm. in money yeah. in, in a game and like I think that teaching people how to make games I mean that's a way to get people to actually do cool shit in the future that we sort of fucked up by being lazy and bad. Like yeah. I guess thinking, is what I would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, with, with dreams, what's really interesting is the fact that people who <clears throat> never, who might never have actually properly played a game themselves, or people who are not really interested in making a game, might make a game. If you know what I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. kind of like ax by accident. Yeah. Like you hooked them like, by accident. Like, yeah. yeah, and then the, like those people, like you know, who've never ever even thought about making a game, will supply us with games ooh, ooh, ooh. and then like ev the whole of the games landscape yeah. might change again and I just think that's so exciting like yeah. I want to play you know like a game that someone I don't know in a country I've never heard of maybe yeah. um, like some old grandma makes this thing ooh. and then I want to play it like that kind of thing yeah. I just want to know what is that person is thinking about and so dreams is probably going to supply us with like you know uh, like a kind of organ making, strange <laughs> yeah. organ making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the know, organ museum alone. Two. There you yeah. go. It's like yeah. worth the it's, cost you know, of entry. Like the organs have already been made, so <laughs> you can just come in and just be like, well, I'm going to be the narrative designer on this organ, organ game. game. And, and just like pluck, like, game. okay, this character, these nine organs, <laughs> this Legend of Zelda ripoff, yep. and we're going to put them all together, and then I'm going to write a story Mario, that ties Mario. it all up. Right. Yeah. You know, like it seems like there's and just Dreams weird is, potential like that. Yeah, Dream is so capable of putting all these weird things together that actually after a while you're like no this makes sense this makes sense yeah. <laughs> you know, one thing I really like about dreams is that you directly be in contact with user experience rather mm -hmm. than be meddled with game systems and all mm -hmm. that you know because whenever I hire a game designer I always want them to know more about the user experience part of it yes. you know the emotional context yeah. of mm -hmm. the game and I feel that dreams get you directly in contact with that so yeah I really really love the yeah, concept design for the feeling not for the rules yeah right? exactly all right well yeah. we're gonna design for the feeling and then take a break <laughs> to go over the rules because we have to all be on the same page with that stuff thanks everyone for coming out thank, thank you fantastic thank you. to talk to you thank great you so to see y'all happy e3 happy yeah. e3 happy everyone. e3 to everyone yeah and uh we're gonna take a break and come back with wait what time is it our final segment of the evening so stay tuned we'll be back <laughs> 